Am I a domestic terrorist? Well, guess what? The Department of Justice may say so. In fact, you may be a domestic terrorist. I know you woke up this morning and you thought, hey, I'm going to listen to the Sarah Carter show and just have a good time. And, you know, hear what great Congressman uh, Andy Biggs has to say because he's always fun and he always has brilliant things uh, to, to say whenever he comes on my show. But I bet you, you did not wake up thinking, man, am I a domestic terrorist? Am I an enemy of the people? Guys, we live in a time, guys and gals, is that okay, guys and gals? Um, I will refuse to say non-binary or cisgender, okay? <laughs> That's where I draw the line. I don't even know what they mean. I, I thought when people were talking about non-binary, they were talking about like a computer program. I had no idea that had anything to do with someone's, uh, the way they see themselves uh, or, their, or their sex. I, I had no idea about that at all. But I do have an idea about U.S. intelligence and foreign intelligence uh, agencies as well. And I only thought as a journalist that I had to be concerned about foreign intelligence agencies listening in to my conversations with sources while I was overseas or getting a line on my phone when I traveled to their country, which I expected them to do. Um, so I always had like a burner phone and I never kept my actual data on my real phone. But now in the United States of America, you and I are facing something that I believe we've never really faced before, except for at the very, very beginnings of the FBI. You know, when J. Edgar Hoover was like, yeah, he was a real weirdo. I'm sorry, but he was collecting information on everyone. Everyone and everything. He had like files on everybody. Everybody. Files on all of their secrets. Martin Luther King, I'm spying on you. I know if you've had an affair, I know what you do with women. Um, Cesar Chavez, and these are the guys that were more, you know, like out there and vocal. But he, they were collecting on everybody. And now I'm wondering, are they collecting on us now in such a way that forever we have lost our privacy. A FISA hearing is coming up in Washington, D.C. in a week. That is our Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act hearing. Senator Rand Paul has been very outspoken against that. Congressman Andy Biggs has been very outspoken about the FISA Act that allowed us to basically the United States to expand its ability to spy within its borders in a way because of 9-11, September 11th, and the Patriot Act. But I want you to just to put this into context for you before we get to Congressman Andy Biggs. We have a wide open border with more than 1 million known gotaways that have disappeared into our country. And by the way, we should have learned our lesson because September 11th should have opened up our eyes, right? But instead, the Biden administration just leaves it wide, wide open, overturned every great regulation and rule and policy that President Trump had during his administration at the border, overturned all of that, and just opened the border wide open. So next week, when lawmakers tell you that we really need FISA, we need this Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, we need the 702s, and we need to collect all of this data because we might be able to prevent a terrorist attack? Ask them why they were okay with leaving the border wide open so that anybody from anywhere in the world could come in and we probably have sleeper cells here right now and uh, criminals who are endangering our citizens. And by the way, innocent people who are living in the shadows, ask them why that's okay, but they need the FISA. And then you'll realize what's going on here. They are collecting information like we've seen on our politicians. They have weaponized the system against the American people. Yes, if you're Catholic and you go to Latin mass, you probably are a domestic terrorist, according to the DOJ. Yes, Sarah, you are a conservative journalist. And if you talk to a source that we deem uh, somebody of concern, which I'm sure they already have, they've probably found sources and found reasons to spy on me and anyone else, then we will deem you a problem and possibly a domestic terrorist. By the way, I do attend Catholic Church as well as non-denominational. I like to spread uh, my love for Christ all over the place and for God. 
Um, and uh, so uh, probably I am a domestic terrorist, uh, according to them. So the thing is, is that we are Americans. We need to stand together. We need to say no more. We have a constitution, folks. They are not in charge. We pay them to work for us. Do you really want everything that you do and everything that you think to be at their fingertips so that they can target you whenever they want? And I know some of you think, well, I'm never going to, you know, do anything wrong. Oh, all you have to do, remember, during COVID is decide that you don't want to wear a mask or you want to invite more than six people into your house. And all of a sudden, you become a problem to the government. Don't think the government is always going to be so easygoing. They are slowly eroding at our power and our freedom as American citizens. It's up to us to keep them in check. And that is why I have the wonderful uh, Congressman Andy Biggs on this show because he's always out there doing yeoman's work, right, on the border, uh, at hearings in New York City. I saw him there. He was staring down Hank Johnson, staring down Adam Schiff, saying, I'm not going to take this from you. You better treat those victims uh, the way they need to be treated. That was the whole Alvin Bragg victims hearing. And uh, before I get to him, I want to tell you about another great American patriot. Yes, Mike Lindell and his company, uh, my pillow. I love my pillow. I love my pillow slippers. I love my pillow pillows. I love my pillow mattress toppers and everything, everything, everything that they have there is fantastic and a great gift for you and your family. And right now you can buy one, get one free on my pillow 2.0. By the way, the my pillow 2.0 is so nice that every time I eat, when I wash my sheets and I take it off of the pillow, I take the pillowcase off you could still feel like the coolness against your face. And living in Texas, I love that. I want to feel cool. I don't want to feel sweaty at night. It has heat regulating technology that keeps you comfortable throughout the night. New fabric dissipates heat and humidity to um, basically create a cooling sensation. And I have proven it. I have done it over and over again. That pillow Stays cool no matter what. So right now for a limited time, when you buy one MyPillow 2.0, you're going to get another one free with promo code CARTER. That's C-A-R-T-E-R. Go to MyPillow.com. That's MyPillow 2.0. MyPillow.com. Buy one, get one pricing plus discounts on your favorite MyPillow products like towels, sheets, slippers, and more by using code Carter, C A R T E R. Stay cool and sleep better with the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free sale going on now at mypillow.com, promo code Carter. That's mypillow.com, promo code Carter. I've got Congressman Andy Biggs from the great state of Arizona on with me. Um, and he's also a very good friend, uh, just a great American and a great patriot. Thanks so much for being on, Congressman. It's great to have you back. I feel like it's been a while. Yeah, sir. It's good to see you. Good to be with you. It has been too long, to be honest yeah, with except you. For the fact, far too long. Except for the fact that we were kind of across from each other at that hearing, remember? So it was like we were, yeah. I, I, I saw you sitting over there intently looking at notes and staring at, you know, the folks that were on my side, which happened to be the Democrats. I, I liked the stare down that you gave them, though, when they were insulting the victims of crime in New York City. I'm very, I'm very proud of was, that. <laughs> I was incredulous. I was incredulous uh, for two things. Number one, that they would actually condescend and belittle victims of crime in their own city as a result of policies that they they support. And then I was also incredulous that you were sitting over there on the Democrat side of that hearing and not over on the on the good guy side. But that's just the way it works. I actually felt like I was sitting in the lion's den. I was just waiting for some Democrat backlash, some real hate. Um, I did catch Adam Schiff for a second while I was interviewing uh, Elise Stefanik. Uh, By the way, you left before I could interview you. I know everybody was trying to get out of the hearing at the end, um, but but Adam Schiff came walking out, um, took a quick look at me, and immediately started running down the hallway for life. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just. Over That's a badge of honor. That was a badge of That's honor. A badge I was like, of honor. thank you, God. Thank you. This was the best moment <laughs> in my life. Check the block. That's off my bucket list. But let, let's talk about what is happening 
to America because before we got on, we had a chance to quickly just touch on a few things and catch up. And one of the things that we talked about, and I, I told you, um, my co college roommate, uh, you know, she has three sons, amazing life and lives in California. She's a lawyer that fights for the rights of disabled children. And one of her sons is disabled and another one of her sons is in a very good high school. And she just posted today that, um, one of his close friends, uh, had committed suicide just a day ago. And he's very, you know, you see this young, beautiful life, high school student, um, that gave up on life. And she brought up some really good points. And this is Georgiana, my, my old college roommate. She brought up some really good points that we live in a very different world today. There's so much pressure on our youth and on our young and our nation is also facing its own, I think, apex. You know, what are, which direction are we going to take? Are we going to be the nation that we were founded to be? Or are we going to be this nation that is devolving into this mess? And, um, and it's really kind of frightening for me to see that and to see what's happening to our young people. Yeah, you know, Sarah, when we were talking, I was thinking uh, there's – there's another song. There's an old song about the age of innocence, and we've lost the age of innocence. We don't allow children to be innocent anymore. I mean, this this idea that you want to groom a kid that they don't know what their their sex is, and you want to start from birth, and you're going to fiddle around with their own birth certificate, you know, male, female, other. I mean, this this kind of insanity um, basically uh, takes away an ability of a young, impressionable mind to determine and gather who they are. Because instead of having a series of things that actually work, you know, and we talk, whether you want to talk about nuclear family, we were, you and I were talking about, yeah, I, I used to wear hand-me-down uh, pants for Pete's sakes, or my mom would buy me a pair of Levi's that was supposed to last me. If I might grow four inches in the year, I was, you know, they were going to last me, doggone it, and, and uh, they'd just be up to my ankles by the time the end of the year came and wearing patches. We have changed this notion right. of, 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 of basically knowing who you are. And um, this, this uh, I, I don't, we, of course, I don't know the cause of this young man, right. but I do see that more and more pathologies are in, in, our, in our society and they go younger and younger. And, and so I look at it and I say, well, we've got this, you, you've basically taken away uh, any stability uh, for many kids in our society, and you're telling them that nothing matters. You know, you've taken away the notion of, uh, you know, religious faith and belief in God. You've taken away, uh, you, you will know who you are as a male or female because it doesn't matter anymore. Um, you've taken away uh, uh, any kind of rules. If you're a white male, uh, you are the most evil person that's ever lived on the planet. Um, you've basically turned every, every kid is being indoctrinated. I mean, so a great book, a great book I was meant to tell you about this, James Lindsay, The, the Marxification of, of uh, Education, fantastic book. But he's talking about the, what happens in our schools and how you, it's all, everything is kind of uh, being diffused from one central Marxist source. And in so doing, you, you're getting Marxification, but you and I both know that it, it also includes um, emasculation of your identity, and and by the way, I said emasculation once in a hearing, and, and, the, and oh, did Adam and, Schiff attack and, you, or was it Ilhan Omar? Because I'm oh right well, no, I'm, all the, all the females in the judiciary committee go, ah, yeah. and I'm like, well, what do you think emasculation means? I, I you know, tell me, is there a new is there a new definition? I no, mean, but if you God, walked in with, but if you walked in with a dress. You would be the most popular yeah. congressional member uh, uh, for the left, at least. I think maybe some on the right, maybe Jim Jordan wouldn't be having lunch with you or anything. But I think like on the, <laughs> on the left, that would de definitely be uh, like a very popular move. And that's what's sad. And the reason why I bring that up yeah. is because I think our children feel like they they know they're being robbed. They know that adults are no longer protecting them. They are screaming for some kind of attention. You know, they feel 
our young men feel emasculated. They do to a large extent. They look around and the most popular men are the ones in dresses or have gone through a sex change or, you know, who are, you know, and I, and I see this everywhere. I see it to the point where even if you're watching Disney Channel, and then I, I promise to move on to other subjects right now, but I just think this is so important. You know, children are being inundated with sex issues, uh, gay marriage, um, uh, teenage gay affairs. And I, I couldn't even believe what I was seeing on television. I don't let my daughter watch you know, the Disney plus anymore. I took it away, even though I love the old Disney movies. It's like every other show was an issue, like a soap opera drama that our children should not be dealing with. And it, and I think what you're seeing, and I think what we're seeing now is you're right. We are robbing our children of a very precious time in their lives you know, God blessed us with the ability to be young and have dreams and um, be protected by our families and yeah. our society is right. robbing them of that. Right. And so I, I would say just, you know, I, I don't I know you, we, you want to move on to something else, but I just say we are reaping what we have sown. That's what's happening. Uh, we've got now multiple generations that have kind of been indoctrinated in this sexual dysphoria. I mean, uh, that that's just re- what's happened. And now we live in kind of a dystopian universe where everything that you once trusted, you cannot trust the government. Nobody trusts the government anymore. Nobody, a lot of people don't even trust their, their, their churches anymore. They don't trust the educational system. Even the left, left wingers don't trust the, the education system. You don't trust business because you see what's coming out of the, uh, the boardrooms. You don't trust uh, basically, you name an institution in our society, you don't trust any of the federal bureaucracy. Guess what? Uh, that's you've we've reaped what we sow. Absolutely, you've re- we're all being surveilled. We're all being surveilled well, let's by. Talk about that. By, we're all being surveilled because, and that goes right into the fact that not only are children feeling that pressure. Frankly, I'm feeling that pressure. I know you're feeling that pressure. We saw what happened under President Trump. We saw the extent of. Uh, the ability of our intelligence agencies and to gather information on Americans. This is with U.S. taxpayer dollars and not having a appropriate warrant and basing it on baseless lies like the Christopher Steele dossier. And now we see that in 2020, and by the way, I was listening to Bob Woodward's a book on tape where he plays all of the interviews with President Trump. And for all of you out there that still think uh, the Christopher Steele dossier is real, it is not. All you have to do is even listen to Bob Woodward, who's on the left, and he called it garbage, complete and utter fallacies and lies. And now we see a new and groundbreaking, I believe, piece of information is that those 51 intelligence officers who in October of 2020 put together a letter saying that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. Now we find out that Mike Morrell, who was kind of leading that effort with the 51 former deputy director of the CIA, and I know him very well uh, from his time at the DOD and CIA, uh, was actually recruited by Antony Blinken, who is now the secretary of state. So during the campaign, to write a false letter discrediting a true story that Miranda Devine and the New York Post did to inform the American public. Do you see that as election interference? It's it's totally election interference. And I I just want to point out that we we saw an impeachment that resulted in a resignation of Richard Nixon over something that was so silly and microscopic compared to the the type of offenses we've seen today. And if you begin to talk about, well, you know, Blinken should be impeached. Mallorca should be impeached. How about Joe Biden should be impeached? Uh, You know, there is so much going on as we investigate Joe Biden. But but what you're talking about is a deliberate attempt to suppress the the Republican Trump voter and, uh, and to label him with something that was patently false and untrue made up out of whole cloth by discredited uh, individuals. And, and, and then they peddled it to the, the left stream media who bought it because and, it fit their narrative. And let's be 
frank here. Also, some of the rhinos on the right. I'm just going to say it. You don't need to say it. Yes. Because Michael Hayden, former head of the CIA, former head of the national of our national security, the NSC, was involved in that, and he signed off on that. And I've interviewed him before. I remember interviewing Michael Hayden when he first went to the CIA, and I was at the Washington Times. And I went up to the seventh floor, you know, at uh, Langley and sat down and interviewed him. And I interviewed him a, a number of times before. And I remember one thing that he said to me that was really, wow, it's, it still stayed in my head. And Michael Hayden said to me, and I said, do we have any more privacy anymore, sir? And he said, for any American who believes that they still have privacy, they are sadly mistaken. There is no more privacy. And this was a person that was in charge of all of the, uh, basically the apparatus that would be used to spy on people. So yeah, he signed off on that letter. I'll be back in a second with Congressman Andy Biggs. But first I wanna tell you about Allegiance Gold. I love this idea, right? Because Allegiance Gold will deliver the gold and silver right to your door. I know that sounds too good to be true, right? But I want you to think about what's going on right now in our world. We need to diversify. We've seen what's happened in our banking system here in the United States, and that should send a warning, and by the way, a chill up your spine. And don't just trust me, do your own research. You have to be able to protect your assets. You have to be able to diversify to protect your family. And I believe in Allegiance Gold, and right now you can get $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. That's right, $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. My friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA, your 401k, with physical gold and silver. Like I said, they'll deliver it securely right to your front door. So right now, get $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. So don't wait. Call or click today, 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH, S-A-R-A, or go to protectwithsarahnoh.com. That is protectwithsarahnoh.com. We can't control the Biden administration, folks, but we can prepare. 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH, S-A-R-A, or protectwithsarah.com. If you enjoy conversations with America First Patriots like Andy Biggs, subscribe to my show today here on YouTube and Rumble. Does it frighten you, Congressman Biggs? The way some Americans are seeing it now is like, no one's going to be held accountable. We've basically, we have a government that's trampling the Constitution. And we don't know where to go from here. I keep seeing that on, on, my, on my Twitter feeds. Everywhere, people are worried. It's it's a constant theme that I hear in my district and wherever else I go. So I, I go around the country and speak and talk to groups. That is a persistent, constant theme. But the reality, unfortunate reality, is that indeed nobody is is has got privacy. And these so we're having a hearing this next week on the abuse of FISA, right? So but I'm, I'm afraid that some of my Democrat friends and some of my Republican friends are going to say, well, you know, but we have to have this. We're no safer after, you know, are we any safer? Did we prevent any, you know, anything by spying on you or me? Or, 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 you know, you've got this massive NSA complex at the point of the mountain just south of Salt Lake, uh, Utah. It is massive. And, and they've, they're basically storing data and looking at, at data about American citizens. And I'm like, this, this, this is crazy. And, and um, we've got to take this back. And it gets to back, you know, this is actually a nice round back to where we are when you and I were talking about the age of innocence. The age of innocence allowed you to make mistakes and then correct them. Right. But the age that we live in today allow, will allow you to be subject to bullying, surveillance, criminal charges, civil harassment, because no one has the ability to actually grow up, try, make mistakes, experience the, the, the bad so they can know the good, the weakness so they can know the strength. None of that. That's absolutely None of that. That's absolutely true. That's such a great point. What a brilliant point. You're right. It's like you're stuck in whatever 
whatever you've said, whatever you've done, we know that they're, we know that the FBI has been going through people's text messages, listening to their private conversations yeah. and bringing them forward and actually using it against them, not just the FBI, but we could see that in court hearings now. We can see that it's expanded under Obama to be able to spy on uh, reporters talking to sources or doctors talking to their patients or uh, clients of uh, with lawyers, you know, breaking that uh, lawyer client privilege, you know, and this is this is what is going to fundamentally, I believe, transform our nation. And that's why the FISA hearing is so important. And people should be held accountable because you you can't say you protected the nation by casting out a gigantic wide net and not focusing on the threat. You're not the only reason that the NSA or the CIA or anybody who has access to that, even in the FBI, would want that capability is to be able to cast the wide net. So that way they can sweep you up in that net whenever they want. It's like going back to the beginning of the FBI. And by the way, if they wanted to protect us, I'm going to bring you right to the subject that I know is near and dear to your heart. Why don't they shut down the uh, southern border? They could protect us. They could protect the children being trafficked into our country. So if they really care about protecting the American people, why is the border so wide open that over 5 million people by the end of Biden's term are going to be in our country? And that's more than some states. Why is that happening? Yeah, you know, Sarah, I was just down at the border um, last last week with uh uh, your friend and my friend Art Del Cueto, oh, and so Art and I got to tell the story because I think it I think it illustrates what 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 happens day in day out. We were down on the Tohono O'odham Reservation, and I know you've been there. And so we're just driving now. We've been to the Bamary Wash. Now we're, we've been to San Miguel Gate, and we're driving we're driving eastbound, and, and we're heading to the the, the Babos Mountains. And and basically, there's nothing out there. It is totally. Uh, isolated. And I look up and about 200 yards ahead of us, there are several kids, small kids playing in the dirt road ahead of us. And and um, Art and I see this and we're like, uh-oh. And, and I'm thinking about, you know, are those reservation kids? But why would a reservation kid be out there? There's not even, that's, that's, there's nothing there. And we get there and there's 21 people there. And they're, they're all from Mexico. They're all coming in. By the way, the number three uh, country is over 10,000, this fiscal year, over 10,000 South Asian Indians have come to the Tucson sector. Why the Tucson sector? I don't know. But anyway, so we see this group of 21. There's 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 a, a, lady, a, a fa lady carrying an eight-month-old baby, another lady carrying a five-month-old baby, a 10-year-old kid in Harachi sandals. We said, how long have you, you been here? We've been here two hours. How did you get here? The coyotes, they all are very open. The coyotes dropped us off, uh, you know, f further south and pointed to the Babel Mountain and said, you go to that that mountain there, and then once you get to the fence, sit down, and the and the uh, CBP uh, are going to come pick you up. That's what they were told, and that's what's happening uh, uh, there. Now, why were why were they there? Because as as all the border patrol finally converged to pick them up, there's nothing uh, guarding the rest of the border, and drugs will flow in. Uh, high value targets like uh, you know uh, Iran Iranians, terrorists, uh, criminal gang bangers. They're going to come in. And that's this administration does not like the, the United States of America. I absolutely agree. And I think that the chaos is purposeful. And I think that's why they are doing it. Yes. And we're but we're watching it happen. And I feel like I have no control over the direction it's going in. And the reason I'm going to jump really quick, because the border that I agree with you, Title 42 it's going to end. We know that's going to happen. There are some estimates that the numbers could be as high as 400,000 people in one month at the end of Title 42, just because of the amount of people that have been traversing through Central America and coming through Mexico. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think those numbers might be accurate right now? I mean, we're seeing huge numbers anyways. Um, how concerned are you about the end of Title 42 with nothing else in place to kind of control the border flow? Well, concern for a lot of reasons. Number one, just as you say, no control. Number two, the, there's there's over 40,000 people, I've been told, in, in Tijuana uh, waiting, to, uh, amassing already, ready to come over. Uh, uh, I, I don't mean Tijuana. I mean, I mean Juarez. I'm sorry, I said Tijuana, but in Juarez. 
Uh, I've, I've been told that there are thousands and thousands and more just on the other side of the border waiting for Title 42 to go away. And the Democrats don't believe that, that the, anybody knows what Title 42 is. The cartel does. They know what Title 42 when that goes away. Uh, the third thing is uh, talking with uh, the sector chiefs um, that I've talked to in the recent last month or so and local law enforcement. None of them are prepared for that kind of influx. The, these, these people are going to be released into the border communities because there's simply going to be no place for them to be t detained and processed. And uh, by the way, that group of 21, they were, they were estimated by a CBP agent that I was talking to. They, they thought they'd be out within four to six hours from the time they got picked up, they released into the States. That's what's going to happen. It's, you know, like Tucson's going to see an influx. Yuma's going to see an influx. Del Rio, McAllen, Brownsville. All of those are going to see massive uh, uh, influx of people being released into their, into their community. And then I want to hear uh, Representative Escobar say, hey, this is no problem. Because she says there's nothing. She never says there's a problem at all. And um, the reality is it's going to be overwhelming. I think it will be, and I we already know it's overwhelming. We have um, over a million known gotaways in our country, probably much yes. higher than that. But yet the DOJ and mm -hmm. the FBI says uh, Catholics who attend Latin mass might be domestic terrorists or a parent who stands up to the school board. We already know that the Department of Justice, is its priorities are so upside down under Merrick Garland. What is your assessment of that, and do you think that's going to continue to be a problem, uh, how the FBI is designating particular groups uh, domestic terrorists, while they've probably already let in, God only knows how many sleeper cells. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it's it's a huge, it, it's actually a crisis because they've weaponized and politicized DOJ, FBI, and other and, and the intelligence community and not the other parts of the federal police apparatus. So, so my my get back to my deal is. The next committee hearing we have for judiciary should probably be in Washington, D.C. And take a look at uh, uh, the, the deputy U.S. attorney there who's in charge of prosecuting both the local D.C. laws and the federal laws there and, and how he's abusing those. And because and, I, have, I have this sneaking hunch, might have looked at some numbers, but I have some sneaking hunch that he's actually uh, more lax than Alvin Bragg is up in New York. And so... Uh, I, I think you've got massive problems in, in D.C., and I think we should highlight that. I absolutely believe that, and I will attend that hearing. But this time, I'm going to sit on your side. This time, I'm going to be on the Republican <laughs> side. I am not sitting near Adam Schiff next time. That is a promise. You got that. Um, okay, now, before I let you go, before I let you go, 2024 is around the corner. Um, I know that there are a lot of people that are gearing up on the Republican side, on the GOP side. Uh, what is it going to take to go across that hump this next election to 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 get someone in office, an elected official that actually is an elected official that we voted into office? I believe unelected officials are now running the White House. I can't imagine that President Biden um, has any capability to do this whatsoever. So what is it going to take for the Republican Party and the conservatives to actually get that and get it back? Well, first of all, the election laws have to be cleaned up in most of these states. And, and we have a governor in Arizona that just vetoed some pretty strong election law reform. So that's terrible. But that, the problem is there are, there are several states, which you, we could name them, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, those that's that's the the mountain to climb and and we're going to have to win those states and right now you know we've got a new uh, GOP chair he's doing I think uh, trying to bring everybody together across the board so that you know right left and like you you said the the more I'll just say the more moderate establishment types they have they need to stay home with the Republican whoever it is. I mean, I got told that for years because you, you, the, it would always be a primary where a, a a more moderate Republican would win. I mean, John McCain for Pete's sakes for years, and I would and, and John was 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 pro life, and I got along with them uh, on on so many things. But they would say to me, Andy, you have to come together and and endorse John McCain and 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 campaign for McCain. Okay, well then why didn't they, the 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 left wing Republicans or more moderate Republicans come together? And try to help 
Uh, Carrie Lake, she won the primary at fair and square. Why didn't they come for Blake Masters, who, who won this, this Senate primary fair and square? That's what we have to have if we're going to pull this thing back together. And, um, you know, uh, we, we just don't do a really good job of that. The Democrats... Uh, uh, although they're the much better at that, the, they are much better at that. Yeah, they, although they don't even care if it's Ilhan Omar. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But I mean, look, you got you got Kirsten Sinema has now gone independent in Arizona, and Ruben Gallego is going to run against her as a, as a Democrat. That's going to be one heck of an interesting race, um, and will have, in my opinion, a dramatic impact on the the ele- presidential uh, election in Arizona. Ooh, I think that's going to uh, be very but, interesting. Wait, let me ask you this. Are you interested yeah. in running for the Senate? Would you consider it running for Senate of Arizona in Arizona? So so here's the thing, Sarah. Thanks for asking. I'm interested in running from the U.S. Senate. I, I th- it's, uh... <laughs> Don't start doing the Adam Schiff on me, okay? Don't start running in the other direction. <laughs> Don't start <laughs> shifting everybody, you know? Don't, I, we want yeah, you to run towards yeah. the Senate. Are, okay, are you are you endorsing anyone? Uh, I, I not yet. I haven't endorsed anyone. I'm waiting to see who all gets in there. I I, I know some people. I think are going to get in there. We'll have to wait and see if they actually pull the trigger. But uh, okay, any can you say pull the trigger anymore? I don't. I don't even know. Anymore? I don't even know. I'm going to say pull the trigger. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine with trigger. that. We pull yeah, the trigger on that. Um, and then last but not least, your final thoughts for all of you listening out there. His final thoughts are usually like. Brilliant. We're going to have a moment here. I'm wait. I'm putting you on the line. <laughs> pressure. No pressure. No pressure at all. Final thoughts. Final yeah. words of wisdom for all of the Sarah Carter Show listeners. Oh, oh. So you're not even going to tee it up for nope. me. Well, well done. Just- okay. So, so what I would say is, you know, it, it while it seems in some ways hopeless and and irredeemable. I, I, I think that we win ultimately because I know God wins. And if we stay faithful and we, we work hard, we can win. From your mouth to God's ears. And uh, thank mm-hmm. you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. I'm bringing you back on again and again. Um, I just, I love being able to talk to you. I think uh, you're one of the few people with common sense and actually an honest broker uh, whenever I speak with you, I think you just come from the heart and there's so few people that are that genuine anymore. Thanks so much, Congressman. So I think we covered just about everything under the sun that the American, uh, people, at least the people that I've been speaking to, and I'm sure you out there talking to your friends and your families, talking to your neighbors are worried about, we're worried about our nation. We're worried about our right to privacy. We're worried about a wide open border. We're concerned about election integrity. We're worried about the fact that the government is encroaching more and more on our freedoms. And we're mostly, mostly worried about our children and about their future and what that holds. So what do we need to do? We need to look at the glass as half full because thank God we don't live in a country like Iran. Thank God we don't live in a place like Pakistan or Afghanistan where there's no rights at all. So right now, while we still have rights, let's get up and do something about it. Let's get together. Let's go to our children's schools and find out what's going on. Let's find out what our lawmakers are doing. And by the way, if you don't like what your lawmakers are doing and you want to run for office, do it. Just do it. There is nothing stopping you from being more involved and more connected. And remember, there's more of us than there are of them. Thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. I love everything I hear from you. So please keep writing reviews. Please keep sending me your thoughts on Twitter, on Truth. And remember, you can get your kids joining the Amazing Club Awesome Sauce. This book is great. It's part of a great series of books by Brave Books. And and I am loving it every bit of this and what it's teaching our children, you can be part of the Brave Books family with me. So follow me on Truth at Sarah Carter Official, on Twitter at Sarah Carter DC, and on Instagram at S Carter DC. God bless you. God bless our great nation. And God bless the great state of Texas.